Hey guys, Miss Marisa here, and in this video, we're going to do a refresher of significant figures from pre P chemistry. Now, I always refer to significant figures as sig figs, so if you ever hear me talk about counting the number of sig figs or reporting an answer to the correct number of sig figs, I'm just referring to significant figures. Um, I always get the question of why do I care about significant figures? Like why does it make a difference? Um, there's two reasons for that. Number one, there is a point on the AP test that comes from significant figures and reporting them correctly either from a calculation or from a piece of equipment, like you're making a measurement from a piece of glassware or something like that. Um, but the other reason is, is that it's all about how much do I trust my number? Um, for example, here you can see they reported these three different values to a very different number of digits, even though this is the exact same paper clip. And the reason why is because I can trust these three rulers very differently. Obviously, the markings are a lot closer together on this ruler, and so I can trust my number that I'm reporting from it to um, a greater uh, pr level of precision. And so that's where significant figures comes in. And so we'll talk more about equipment here in just a little bit. I want to first talk about how do I count the number of significant figures if I'm already given a value. Um, first off, you notice here that there are a set of rules that you could use, um, but I'll be honest, they're kind of wordy and it's they're kind of, you know, one of those things that if you had to go remember them as is, it would be kind of complicated. So I always use the United States trick to count significant figures. Um, so how the United States tricks trick works is if you pretend that the United States is your number, and that's not a hashtag, but rather a number, okay? Um, we have to remember what side of the United States each ocean is on. So if you remember that on the California side, we have the Pacific Ocean, and on the uh, New Jersey, you know, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia side, we have the Atlantic Ocean. This is how the trick works. So first off, on the Pacific side, this is what we use when the decimal is present. We count from this side of the number, okay? If the decimal is absent, then we count from the right side of the number. We always start counting at the first non-zero digit, and once we start counting, we count everything else that we see. So I'm gonna give you kind of an example that's not on here. I always show people the case of the three 100s when I talk about significant figures, because to me, this really hammers home why we care about significant figures. Um, all three of these 100s have a different level of precision, a different number of significant figures to them. First off, on this 100, the decimal is absent, so I would start counting from the Atlantic side of the number. But I don't start counting sig figs until I get to the first non-zero digit, which here happens to be one, okay? Now, once I start counting, I count everything else in that direction, but I don't have anything else left to count. So that means that this particular number only has one significant figure to it. This 100, though, has a decimal that's present. So now what happens is I start counting from the opposite direction. Again, I count um, starting at the first non-zero digit, which here is the one. Once I start counting, I count everything else. So this particular number has three significant figures to it. This last one here also has a decimal that's present, so I start counting from the Pacific Ocean side of the number. I start counting at the first non-zero digit, and once I start counting, I count everything else. So this one has four significant figures to it. Now you're thinking, okay, those are all 100, What, like, what's the difference? And remember, I said it's all about the level of trust. If I told you that you needed exactly 100 grams of some sort of medicine, and if you had anything off from 100 grams of this medicine, you would die. Which of these three would you trust the most? I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> give me this one. And here's the reason why. If you remember back to equipment, we always report all known digits plus one estimated digit. So what that means is that this 100 was recorded on a piece of equipment that marked every one, every one gram, every one milliliter, whatever the case may be, and this is my estimated digit. 
This was recorded on a piece of equipment that marked every 10, 10 milliliters maybe, or 10 grams. And so this ones place is my estimated digit. Now this bad boy over here, I mean, this is your estimated digit here. So this is something like maybe it was some sort of beaker that you're, you know, trying to measure um, your substance in, which obviously we should never use a beaker because beakers mark really far apart. So this is, these markings are really far apart. So I'm kind of just eyeballing that 100 here. I don't know if it's exactly 100 or not. So again, it's all about the level of trust in that number. All right, so here's what I want you to do. There's um, six examples down here. I want you to pause and take just a moment. So pause the video and take just a moment to see if you can answer those six examples. Okay, so pause the video and go try them out. All right, did you pause the video? Did you go try them out? I'm gonna trust that you did. Okay, so let me put the answers up here so that way you can see how you did. Okay, so here are the answers to those particular examples. Again, you can kind of see I've indicated which direction I'm counting from, from depending on if the decimal is present or absent. So really the only one where the decimal was absent here was this guy here. So I counted um, from that Atlantic Ocean side, but I wouldn't start until the two. Um, also something real quick about scientific notation. When I'm reporting scientific notation, um, in this coefficient part, this big part of the number before the times 10 exponent, I'm only reporting significant figures there. So that's kind of nice about uh, scientific notation is that you can really control exactly which numbers are significant and which ones are not. Um, and that's why sometimes I'll report all my answers in scientific notation whether it needs it or not because I know I can control the significant figures that I'm trying to show. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next page. So um, again, when I'm reading significant figures from equipment, this is where I would want to report all known digits plus one estimated digit. So anytime I'm given, say, a piece of glassware or a ruler or a thermometer or um, a barometer that measures pressure, um, what I want to do first before I start reading that piece of equipment is I'm gonna figure out how often are the little tick marks? How often are the divisions? And once I figure that out, then I know that I always report one digit beyond that, okay? Um, first off, it asks, what is the measuring device used here in the picture to the right? I would hope we recognize that bad boy as being a graduated cylinder. I know y'all use that a lot. Not only pre-P chemistry, but um, I'm gonna assume you use those in middle school and biology and stuff too, so. Um, remember, uh, another piece of glassware that we use a whole lot in AP chemistry is a burette. Uh, burettes look very similar to a graduated cylinder, except their numbering system is flipped because it tells us how much liquid we have dispensed. Um, so a nice way to kind of tell if I have a graduated cylinder versus a burette is look which direction the numbers are counting. Here, I'm bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom, so that's a graduated cylinder. But if I'm smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom, that would actually be a burette. So just look which direction those numbers are counting. So the next thing I'm gonna do is it asks, what is the volume of liquid in the device? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go figure out how often my markings are. Now I know some of you can just look at this piece of equipment and see like, oh, it's marking every one milliliter. And for some of you, that's a little bit trickier to do. So I'm gonna show you kind of a trick you could use if you're not really sure how often it's marking. Um, I go find two numbers where, or two markings that have a number with it. Like here I see 50 and here I see 40. Um, so I know that there um, is a difference of 10 between those numbers. Okay, so that um, what goes on top is the difference between the two numbers. And then I'm going to divide that by how many spaces are between. So I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces in between. So the difference between the marking divided by the number of spaces. And then I can see, hey, that's marking every one. So what that means is if we're marking every one milliliter, then I want to estimate to the tenths place. If I don't, then I'm not technically reporting the correct number of digits from that piece of equipment. So again, all known digits, all known markings, plus one estimated digit. So the deal is, is that your estimated digit might be different than somebody else. And that's okay. Uh, you'll even notice when I tend to give like homework keys and things for this, I'll even put like, hey, your last digit might be different from mine. And that's okay. If you were taking the AP test and this happened to be the question that they were grading, uh, they would give you kind of a window of 
um, appropriate numbers to use here. Like they probably, you know, expect a little variation there, um, but they would give you a window of, of numbers that you could have. All right, so on reporting the volume of liquid in this device, remember we always read from the bottom of the meniscus. So here's my meniscus here. So I see that's hitting about 41, 42, maybe around, right around 43. And I feel like it's marking on the line. You may feel like it's not, but I kind of feel like it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 43.0 to show that I feel like that that reading is exactly on the line. And then, of course, I put a unit with it here. In the case of a graduate cylinder, I'd put milliliters. I asked how many significant figures did we report. Well, we had a decimal that's present. So I said count from the Pacific. One, two, three. And so we had three significant figures there. All right. Now, one of the biggest ways that we use significant figures in AP chemistry is when we are reporting answers from um, some sort of calculation. And there's actually two different rules that we use depending on what kind of math that we're doing. If we are multiplying and dividing, then what we do is we look at the significant figures that our individual components had. Okay, so like for example here, this number had three sig figs and this number had five sig figs. Okay, so I look at those and whichever one had the least number of sig figs, that number is going to limit how much I trust my answer. So therefore, since this only had three sig figs, I'm only going to show three sig figs in my answer. Now, one other thing I want to mention here, it says that we, that we don't use counted or exact numbers or accepted known conversions as they technically have infinite sig figs. Like for example, let's say I was taking an average. And so I, you know, had some numbers and then I divided it by however many numbers I had. Like I had three numbers that I was averaging together and so I divide by three. When I divide by three, that was like an exact number of how many values I had. And so I don't use that in sig fig determination. Um, same thing goes when I'm doing dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is the big time that we do this 24 hours per one day kind of thing. Those, you know, either metric conversions or time conversions or whatever the case may be. And so for those, we don't actually use those in sig fig determination either, which is really awesome because what that means for dimensional analysis is that typically we only care about the first number, the given number in our problem when determining how many sig figs for our answer. Now, one last thing I want to go ahead and mention here. Um, of course, we need to cut this off and put a unit with it. So I know I'm going to show three sig figs, which would cut it off right here. Um, however, if this number is five or above, then that'll round that previous number up. And so that's why we use 15.8 here. Um, also, when I multiply and divide, you're going to have to think about if your units cancel or multiply together. Here I had centimeters times centimeters, so that would come out to centimeters squared. Now, we use that rule a whole lot in pre-P. The rule that we don't use a whole lot in pre-P is the adding and subtracting rule. So I want to talk about this one for a minute. Um, with adding and subtracting, rather than looking at the number of significant figures, we actually look at how many places are past the decimal. So for example here, these two numbers are getting added together. I see that this number has two places past the decimal, whereas this one has no places past the decimal. So when I report my answer, I actually want to show this with no places past the decimal. Again, though, I did look to see, hey, would that one digit beyond rounded up? I see it's five or more, and so therefore it would round up. Okay, so that's why we put 1071. Also, when I'm adding and subtracting, I'm not going to call... Um, multiply or cancel out any units, uh, the unit will just stay consistent. Consistent. If I'm adding grams to grams, then my answer is going to be in grams, okay? Um, also, as it mentions down here, there is one free response question where you must have exact number of sig figs typically in order to earn the point. Um, so what that means is that they could either give you a calculation problem or they could give you a piece of reading equipment problem and ask you to report the answer and score that one question for sig figs. So here's the good news. That means it's only one point how, out of however many points the test is. It's, it's really not that big of a deal. However, it's still something we want to be conscious of. And plus, we don't want to annoy the AP grader. Like, if a question only needs three sig figs and I'm showing 20 and the AP grader looks at it and is like, oh, uh, why are you showing 20 sig figs? That's ridiculous. They're going to like question everything that you're doing then at that point because they think you don't know what you're doing. So we just want to look like we're confident when we're answering AP questions and always try and report things to correct sig figs. But we don't want to overly freak out about sig figs because it's only one point. So 
you know, kind of weigh the plus and minuses there. Um, all right, so I have four examples down here for you to try out. Um, two of them are multiplying and dividing, and then two of them are adding and subtracting. So take just a moment, pause the video, and go try those out. All right, did you pause the video? Did you go try out those examples? Did you do it? I'm going to assume you did. All right, let me put up some answers, and you can see how you did. All right, here's what I had for my particular answers, okay? So for this first one here, they gave us the answer, but they wanted us to round it. Um, I noticed that this had five sig figs, this had four sig figs. It was a multiplying problem, so I wanted to look at sig figs. So I only wanted to show four significant figures in my answer. However, the way this rounded, the seven would round up the nine. So you got to be really careful on that one. If you just reported three, eight, six, zero and didn't put a decimal point, then technically you only had three sig figs there. So you did need to include the decimal. Um, or your other option would have been to report it in scientific notation. Remember, that's always kind of a really good option there. Since I did centimeters times centimeters, that would be centimeter squared. Here, again, I was dividing, and so I again looked at significant figures. This number had three, this number had four, um, so I only wanted to show three significant figures in my answer. Um, and so therefore, I rounded it to the 7.40 because that six beyond rounded up the nine. But of course, when I round up the nine, that carries again. And so there's where I ended up with the um, 0 0.40 at the end of that. Um, also, I had meters divided by seconds. So therefore, my answer was meters divided by seconds. All right, on this next one here, I was adding, and so I wanted to look at places past the decimal. I had three places past the decimal on this one, two places past the decimal here, so I only wanted to show two places past the decimal. Here, the two didn't round up the four, so I just left it as 27.64, and I had meters plus meters, so I still had meters at the end. And then last but not least down here, um, this was a subtraction problem. I had um, 5.67, two places past the decimal. This number had three places past the decimal. I was subtracting them, so that's why I looked at places versus sig figs. So I only wanted to show two places past the decimal. Um, here's an example where the six does round up the one, so I end up with 2.22. And it was liters all the way through, so I maintained that liters as my unit for there. Um, hopefully this helps, and hopefully you feel a little bit better about counting and reporting things to correct significant figures. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.